بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم The topic for this series as I mentioned is learning spirituality from Imam Hussein and the focus of this series would be the dua of Arafah but I need to explain before we start why did we choose dua Arafah as the topic how is that relevant to this month, the month of Muharram, and how is it going to be helpful for us? Well, in order to explain that, I need to mention two ways of looking at the events that take place in Muharram, and particularly the events that take place on Ashura. There are two ways of looking at what happened in Ashura, two models of narrating the events. In one narration, what you look at is the tragedies, right? The mourning is dominant. You look at the things that happened to Imam Hussein, happened to his family, to his companions. And in this narrative, the main actors are not Imam Hussein and his family. The main actors is Omar bin Saad, is Shib. And Imam Hussein and his family are only the victims who are now going through these great and unexplainable difficulty, suffering, and um, cruelty. But it is not a story of victory. It's a story of mourning. It's a story of tragedy. But there's also another way of looking at Ashura, and that is a kind of looking at Ashura that put Imam Hussein and his family and companions as the main actors of the narrative. We're no longer looking at a defeat, but we're looking at a victory, right? It, the sadness, the tragedy are not the dominant themes. Although they are there, it is in fact a tragedy, but the tragedy should not be the most bright thing that is shining from that event and from that day. Because if that is the case, then Ashura was a defeat for Imam Hussein, whereas we know for a fact it was not. The same is we, we have with Imam Ali alayhi salam, that even on the day, when he was striking, what does he say? Fuzto warabil Kaaba. I am not defeated. This is in fact my victory. So we are going to look at Ashura and see not only the sadness and tragedy, but the victory. And we're going to put Imam Hussein as the main actor. Now, if we want to do this, then we're no longer going to talk about what the other army did. Oh, they struck Imam's hand. Oh, they did this. Of course, all of that has its place and has been covered. Now we're going to be speaking about how is it that in the heat of the battle, when Imam Hussein has already lost some of his friends and companions, when his daughter calls Imam Hussein, Imam Hussein doesn't say, can't she see we're in the middle of a battle? Can't she see like, no, he gets off his horse and says, what is it, sweetheart? What is it, the light of my eye? So the question is this, where does this calmness, this vastness of heart comes from? This capacity to remain so loving and calm despite all of that tragedy. We want to know how is it that on the day of Ashura, when Habib bin Malahir is talking to one of the other companions, he is making jokes. Why is he making jokes on a day like this? Why is it that as the day of Ashura is going on, as the tragedies, tragedies are piling, but the faces of the army of Imam Hussein are brightening, brightening. They're becoming happier, more excited, more passionate. Why is it that Lady Zainab said, illa And I did not see but beauty. Well, the question is, what in the narrative that we usually tell of Ashura is beautiful? Is the murdering of Ali Asghar beautiful? Is the Shahada of Ali Akbar beautiful? Is what they did to Hazrat Abalfat beautiful? In fact, not. So we have to look for the beauty elsewhere. The beauty 
is in what was happening inside these beautiful characters. The beauty that Lady Zainab can see, despite all that is happening around her, has roots within her. The calmness Imam Hussein shows to be able to be there for his daughter in the heat of the battle and still be loving and caring and listen to her. This is coming from within Imam Hussein. And when we look at Ashura this way, we are now faced with a lot of questions. Are these even real? Did Lady Zainab actually said, How is that possible? How can a human being in such difficult situations still see beauty, remain calm, be blissful, make jokes like, make jokes like Habib bin Madahir? So these are the questions we are going to have if we look at the story of Ashura not as a tragedy only that leads to defeat, but as a victory. So when we want to answer this question, we realize that this beauty that they saw, this calmness that they had, comes from the state they had within themselves, right? And that is going to be the focus of this series. We want to know more, not about what happened to Imam Hussein, but was what's happening within Imam Hussein. What was his spiritual state like? What was his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like? What was it that allowed him to remain so calm, so hopeful, so strong? What is it inside this human being that even when on the Dhuhr of Ashura that they've taken everything away from him, even his closest friends, still there is so much attraction in his character that people from the army of the enemy want to risk their lives and join him. What does this attraction come from? Right? And the attraction comes from the greatness that a human soul can achieve. And this is where we need to focus, inshallah, in this series. And it is only, I believe, in looking at Ashura this way that we will actually start to become like them. Because if we don't focus on what Imam Hussein was like, we can mourn him for decades and never become like him. In the same way that there were people next to the Imam or even Imam Ali and they never became like them. In order to become like them, we have to talk about what were they like. Not what happened to them only, but what was their inner state like. And you will see that from Prophet, peace be upon him, there is a greatness of soul, there is a connection to God, there is a type of being a human being that has been continued till Imam Hussein. You have a Prophet, peace be upon him, that when they threw stones at him and he was extremely injured, he still raises his hand in prayer for the people who were throwing stones at him. And then we go to Imam Ali, that in the Battle of Safin, when they deprived Imam Ali and his army of water, and then it turned out that after a while, Imam Ali's side had control over the water, right? So the army, the opposing army start to get scared. Oh, Ali is not going to give us water now. But what does Imam Ali do? Imam Ali says, no. If I want to deprive you of water, then I'm going to be exactly like you. I'm going to give you water even though you deprive my side of water. Now, the important point is this. In the army of Imam Ali, many people said, now we have water, we are going to deprive them of water. Which means what? They were with Imam Ali, not like Imam Ali. And that is what we're trying to avoid. If we are with Imam Hussein, we want to look like Imam Hussein. And even the same is with the Prophet. When Prophet finally went back to Mecca after a long time of being in Medina, the people, some of the people who were next to Prophet said, Oh, today is the day of revenge. 
What prophet said no? Today is the day of forgiveness and compassion. So you can be next to prophet and not be like him. You can be next to Imam Ali and not be like him. And you can also be next to Imam Hussein, mourn him for decades and not be like him. If we want to be like him, we have to know what was he like? What was happening inside him? What was his spiritual state? And this, where is the best place to learn about this? The best place to learn about is, is in his du'as, like du'a arafi, in which we can see in front of us clear the relationship this soul had with his creator. And in the remaining time of this session, before we enter into du'a of arafi, I want to talk a little bit about what is du'a. We're going to read du'a arafi and comment on it. What is a du'a? Dua is not something that you read. Dua is not something you recite. So please make no mistake. In reading Dua Arafi, we are not the ones who are doing the Dua. Dua is a real connection that takes place between a soul and its creator, between a being trapped in time and place with the source of all creation. Dua is like a breeze that comes from eternity and saves us from this feeling of being trapped like a stranger in a world full of pain. This is Dua. So what we're going to be doing when we read Dua Arafi is not that we are performing Dua. We are witnessing. We are witnessing the Dua that took place between Imam Hussein and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very different to perform du'a for that connection to take place and for us now to reflect upon it, to read about it. These two are very different. And inshallah, hopefully, we will also learn how to perform du'a, how to create that connection with our Creator. Inshallah, we will learn that through du'a, we can transcend the limitations of this physical world and this physical life and look at the universe, ourselves and God in a new way. We can see the hidden forces behind the universe, the rules that are there about this universe, but we can only see if we're looking at it from a height. And of course, we may never be able to look at the universe from the heights that Imam Hussein looked at in du'a. Arafi, but no worries because we have access to Dua Arafi and we can learn a lot about the universe from Dua Arafi. I will mention a few of these and inshallah from tomorrow onwards we'll actually jump into the Dua and start enjoying the Dua which took place between Imam Hussein and God. But there are going to be many rules, many spiritual rules about the universe that we will learn from this Dua such as no action will ever be wasted. Imam Hussein has transcended the limitations of time and place and has looked at the world and the universe from a different height. And from there, from that place of connection to God, he is informing us, no action will ever be wasted. Now, an important point, and I have one minute, 40 seconds left till the end of this session, is that if we want to teach our children about Imam Hussein, about the Ahl al-Bayt. Part of it, of course, is to tell their stories, what happened to them. But the real deal, what makes the Ahl al-Bayt special, the thing inside it that can change your children's life and make them even more beautiful, is actually these teachings. And the way to teach and pass on these to your children is not by telling them. They have to see this in our life. So if Imam Hussein in Dua Arafah, for example, tells us that no action in this world is wasted. God listens to all your sorrows. God's always there for your pain. The way to teach your children about Imam Hussein is not to tell them these, but live in a way that they see in your life that you feel God is always with you. Live in a way that they see that you always feel heard. 
when you have problems. And of course, it's not easy. We have to learn. And that's exactly what we try to achieve in this series. Learn to implement these lessons in our life. And by looking at us, hopefully our children will learn about the Ahlul Bayt. Because that seems to be the only way. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll continue and we'll start the dua. Thank you so much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, in a few hours, this lecture will also be uploaded on YouTube. Take care of yourselves. See you tomorrow.